Welcome back. All right, so a uh, little AHL roundup. Uh, I wanted to wear this. So I got the Utica Comets, the new New Jersey Devils colors, and it's just as fantastic as I thought it would be. Um, I got the home and the away. What's interesting is, <laughs> see that right there on the shoulder, New Jersey? It's as if it's as if whoever came up with this said, I don't want to have shoulder patches on it. And somebody told them, you have to have the New Jersey Devils logo on the shoulders. And they went, yeah, all right. Nobody's going to see the damn thing. And and there it is. You can't <laughs> you can't see it. See? Disappeared. It's gone. I, I had no idea it was there until I actually picked up the jersey. And I was like, oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's New Jersey right there. It's on both shoulders, too. It's just it's just there. The white jersey, same thing. Black shoulders and a, a black New Jersey Devils logo on the shoulder. So it's completely invisible. It's weird. So, uh, player of the week this week for the AHL, Scott Perunovic. So, if you're a Blues fan and you're wondering how Perunovic is doing, the answer is great. Uh, one goal and five assists and six points uh, this week. And he's actually the leading... Or one goal, five assists, six points in three games this week. He is the leading scorer around the entire AHL. Uh, he was the number 45 pick in 2018. He's come out of the University of Minnesota Duluth. This is his first pro season. He's doing very well. So I don't know how long St. Louis is going to be able to keep him down there. St. Louis is off to a very good start, 4-0. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers correcting me on their record from this morning's video. But we'll see. Maybe they will be 5-0 by the end of the night. Uh, but yeah, so Perunovic off to a very good start. Springfield as well. Um, Abbotsford ends up 3-1-1 with two wins over Henderson. I didn't think they were going to win that game. I was surprised they did on Friday. Yvonne uh, went with her son Gabriel on Sunday. Uh, last night, and they watched as Seelovs got his first shutout as a member of the Abbotsford Canucks, and so that's an uns that's a kind of a surprisingly uh, good news story there out of Abbotsford so far. Uh, D. Pietro's numbers, it's a small sample size, but they they I think he's 882 in a safe percentage. Uh, Klimovich, five games, two goals, one assist. I can say after having watched them live, I don't think he's out of place there. And I, I'm perfectly fine with him staying. The one that was surprising to me was that Lockwood wasn't in the lineup. But, uh, yeah, uh, Bailey isn't going to stay here. Uh, three goals, three assists, six points in five games. I get the feeling that the Canucks decide to shake things up at the NHL level. Justin Bailey will be the one they call up. Uh, and Madison Bowie, who just has the one goal in five games, uh, I, I think he's going to end up getting a call up at some point, too. Uh, played well in the game that I, I watched on Friday, and uh, yeah, it was it was kind of fun. Uh, darker building than I'm used to. It just seemed really dark. Uh, but again, the hockey's pretty good. Like, from, from a perspective of watching the game, AHL hockey really feels... The speed feels about the same as the NHL. The one thing you notice is there are a lot of the smaller players who are in the AHL. At least that's how it appears to me from where I am in the building. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, Abbotsford will be home next weekend against Ontario, who are off to a really good start. Uh, Ontario's 4-0-1. They lead the Pacific with that record. Uh, Iowa's 3-1 to lead the Central. So the Wilds farm team off to a good start, as are the Kings farm team. Uh, Utica, 3-0 to lead the North. So apparently these jerseys are good luck. And New Jersey's farm team doing well. Then Springfield, 4-0-1, where of course Perunovic is playing and they lead the Atlantic. Uh, Rochester has three rookies who are right now at point-per-game status. Uh, Jack Quinn, four goals, two assists in three games. Does he stay down there for the whole season, or does Buffalo call him up at some point? We'll see. Paterka, three games, one goal, four assists, five points. Same question. Does Buffalo lead these two the whole season on the farm farm team? Do they say, you know what, this year's kind of going to be a, a rough year anyways. We'll leave him down there in Rochester and let him, let him do well, or do they call him up? And then Weisbach. In three games, two goals, one assist, three points for Weisbach. And so there's there's some good features right there for, for the Buffalo Sabres playing in Rochester. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Jake Ottinger uh, leads the league in shots against with 138. He saved 131 of them for Texas so far. So while he sports a 2-2 two and two record, his safe percentage is excellent. And he's facing a lot of pucks. So if you want Ottinger to, to get that experience, Texas is making sure he's getting a lot of it right now. Uh, in San Diego at 0-3, they're the only team in the AHL at this stage without a point. So their next game is Friday in Tucson. And we'll see how things go between the San Diego Gulls and the Tucson Roadrunners uh, this weekend. 
But there you go. Um, and again, it's early in the season, so there's there's limited stuff going on. But as the season goes along, there's going to be a lot more for me to talk about. It is different than the NHL because if a team's off to a good start, okay. If a team's off to a bad start, it doesn't mean coaches are getting fired and everything's bad either. Uh, it can just be a matter of everybody gets called up. I know with Henderson playing against Abbotsford on the weekend, one thing I had in my mind on Friday was there's players right now that are playing for the Vegas Gold Knights that should be down in Henderson which weakens this roster a little bit. So again, you know, when a team has a lot of injuries, you're going to see the AHL team probably suffer in relation. So there you go. Although the Penguins are off to a good start, despite the fact that all the Wilkes-Barre guys right now are in Pittsburgh. So they're doing pretty well with the, with the ECHL. You would think some guys are coming from the ECHL to play for the Penguins. And I think they're 3-0-1 right now. But yeah, good start for them, especially considering all the guys that would have been called up to Pittsburgh uh, so far that would normally be down with Wilkesbury. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.